Hello again. Um, so it's actually not brand new in, in like blockchain uh, terms because it's, it's a year old, so it's like really old at this point. Um, okay, Yule, which is it for? Oh, the big one. Okay. Um, so some of you may have attended DEF CON 3 and may have seen this other talk uh, called Yulia, uh, which I had last year. Um, there's some overlap between that and this one. Um, but yeah, after DEF CON 3, we did learn that there's another language called Yulia, and maybe we shouldn't call our language Yulia as well, so we decided to rename it to Yule. Um, so that's, that's the real talk about it. Okay, the design goals for Yule, the couple of design goals we had. Uh, but first of all, it has to be easy to read and write. Secondly, it has to be a good base for transformations, but more importantly, optimizations on top of it. And uh, the, the third main point is that it should be a really good base for auditing. So actually, these three points play together. Um, by having it easy to audit, uh, we, we are writing code as like single instructions in a function. Um, you know, the smaller the code, the easier to audit. Um, and as a result, it's quite easy to read but it's not well optimized. It uses a lot of gas. So that's why we need a lot of good optimization steps on top of it. Um, and the last big point uh, for the design goals is to support multiple target VMs. Um, of course, it supports EVM, but it also supports EVM 1.5 and eWASM. Okay, some of the features we have in Yule itself. It does look like an assembly language, uh, but it's heavily augmented from an uh, assembly language. First of all, it has variables. Uh, and it also has blocks, and the blocks are their own scopes. Variables declared in blocks are not visible outside, and you can nest blocks. Um, then we also have two really high-level constructs, which are quite uncommon in assembly languages. Uh, we have for loop, and we have a sti switch statement. Um, but we do also have like this uh, single condition uh, if statement for those cases where a switch statement would be an overkill. Um, more importantly, uh, as mentioned, we have functions and we have function calls. Uh, functions can be clearly defined. Uh, and lastly, we have types. Uh, and that's kind of unheard of in assembly languages. Um, so that's why Yule is more like an in intermediate language for compilers than an assembly language. But it can be used uh, in assembly and as an assembly language uh, to write uh, manually contracts in. OK, just what it looks like, an example of the switch construct. This is a function. There's a switch statement with three cases, um, the case 0, 1, and the default. Uh, as you see, there's no break statement in the, the actual uh, blocks, uh, because it, there's no fall through. Uh, if it goes to case 0, it wouldn't go to case 1. But this can be written as a for loop as well. So this is what it looks like, writing it as a for loop. Now here you can identify um, that it is closer to assembly, uh, because we have those EVM-like instructions. Uh, LT for less than, add, and what is the last one, mool. So it is like an augmented assembly. Okay, Yule itself originates from the Solidity inline assembly, which you guys probably are familiar with because it can be used within Solidity. Um, so this inline assembly was introduced like two years ago. It had instructions and jumps. Didn't really add anything else. It did have like variables, but didn't have all these nice features I explained. Um, these nice features were introduced probably a year ago. Uh, we added the functions and foreign switch, and they can be used for a year at this point. Now with 050, we are making a big change, and we are removing some of the features in inline assembly. We are removing jumps. But you guys shouldn't be afraid because the foreign switch statements are way better to do the same things you were doing with jumps. Here I also must mention that even though in inline assembly there was a single version of inline assembly presented to you guys. But in the back end, we had like three different versions of it. And the Solidity compiler can be used in assembler mode, and all these three different versions can be accessed through the assembler mode. So the first version is this uh, inline assembly, the bad one, which has jumps. The second version is the strict inline assembly, which is Yule, as I explained. But the third version is the strict inline assembly with types. Um, now with 050, we're not going to have types yet. Um, but with 060, we are planning to have full, complete Yule support. Now, I must expand here what, what the hell does it mean. Um, so in Ethereum, basically, deploying a contract is a two-step process. There's a constructor, which we usually call the init code. This is being sent to the network. This constructor is executed. It can change the state. 
And it can also return a bytecode, which is stored in this data, and that's the bytecode for your contract. Currently, there's no way to represent these two stages in Yule, uh, but we do have a plan to do that, and that's what we call Yule objects. So that's like the next big part we have to do, and then Yule will be fully capable to write contracts in. And then lastly, probably at 070, uh, we're gonna have types mandatory, and we're gonna have user-defined types. By user-defined types here, I actually mean uh, a specific type for a memory pointer, a specific type for storage key and storage value. Maybe actual user-defined types later. Okay, so when are we gonna have this in Solidity? It's gonna take a while, uh, but it's already in Solidity partially. It's being used in the ABI encoder v2, which is a complete rewrite of the ABI stuff. Eric gonna talk tomorrow at great lengths about all the changes in Solidity, so you guys should listen to that. Um, there are two blockers to have this in Solidity, have optimizations, but the good news, there's a lot of optimization work already being done, so that, that should be covered soon enough. Uh, but the, the other big blocker is rewriting this code generator. So in Solidity, we take the, the source code, we, do, uh, we parse it, we do analysis, etc., and in one stage, we generate EVM bytecode, which probably is a bad idea. Um, so we need to rewrite this, this one step into two steps to generate Yule, and then use Yule to generate EVM. Um, but this is only gonna start after 050, but that's like the big plan uh, for next year. Okay, there are other languages actually uh, already involved with Yule. Um, apart from Solidity, there's this language called Flint, uh, which is a Swift-like language, and it targets Yule. It actually works. Uh, I just tried it yesterday. Uh, and uh, okay, it's not compliant with 050, but it works. Um, there is, is a prototype LLL to Yule compiler, which is really small. And there's also this other language called Logicon, uh, which was a EAT Berlin project, uh, which also targets Yule. Um, hopefully, I mean, that's my personal hope, but probably the entire Solidity team shares that, uh, that Yule is going to be used and utilized by the entire ecosystem, and hopefully we can convince the Viper people to also use it and get all the benefits we have. Okay, the tools regarding Yule, uh, obviously, pretty much everything is, the solid, is in the Solidity compiler, which is C++. Um, but there's also already a Rust implementation of Yule, uh, and it, in this Rust implementation, it is called Yule Sewer. In this Rust implementation, um, you can create Yule code programmatically, and you can print it out, but you can also parse Yule code, do transformations on it, and print it out. Um, and this Rust library is also integrated with SolC to tap into the optimization steps and the compiler. Um, there's like one other use case I really like, called um, YEVM. So basically, YEVM is, it came from a need we have in EWASM. So with EWASM, we want to replace the EVM entirely, and we want to give you this uh, WebAssembly-only client, but probably you still want to execute EVM bytecode, and you can do that with YEVM. So YEVM translates EVM bytecode into Yule source code, which can be also compiled back to EVM and validated, but it can be also compiled to EWASM directly. Um, I think this is a really cool project. Um, and I hope that there are going to be other uh, you know, independent third-party Yule implementations and analyzers for Yule. Um, so basically, that, that's what I wanted to, to tell you guys. You should check the documentation. So make sure you follow the, the link I have there, which is latest. Don't go to the 04, 24, or 25 version of it. Go to the latest. Um, also join our channel, ask any questions, interact with us, and please contribute to Yule Sewer and YVM. We need your help. Um, thank you, guys.